About a year ago, I made a big video regarding playing Steam VR games using a Google Cardboard headset and console controllers. That video was all right but i ended up making multiple videos after that about this which could cause confusion so today i will be making the final but best tutorial regarding this setup i will explain how to set this up tips and tricks and a lot more let's get straight into it Now the requirements for this setup will vary depending on how advanced you're willing to go with this. Let's start with the mandatory things. You will need a mediocre PC, some form of input, and a cardboard or third party phone headset. Now that's only the mandatory things. Now for the things that will vary, you may need a connect, about $10, room space, and more advanced forms of input. Now for the app requirements, you will need Steam VR on your PC and at least one VR application on your phone and PC like V-Ridge, Arian VR, Phone VR, Trinus VR, or iVRY. These are fairly easy, just download the mobile version and the PC version and the rest of the connection work will be done between the apps. I suggest using iVRY, it works the best for me and later on in this video I will show the best settings for that app. Now if you want to be more advanced you will also need a software named driver for vr Now it is more on the expensive side if you don't want to sell the C's, but regardless of how you obtain it, it will make life a little easier. I will link all the applications in the description. First, let's talk about how to set this up. There are many ways to approach this setup, so I'll start with the tier one version of this setup. If you're only looking for a seated experience with no arm tracking, you can easily use your phone headset and a PlayStation or Xbox controller. Now, this will indeed limit the amount of games you can play. Just go into Steam, search VR, then filter it by only VR games, then toggle the full controller support filter. These are all the games you can play with a console controller. Just connect the phone VR application of your choice to Steam VR, then open the game, and it should automatically detect your console controller and you'll be able to play now for tier 2 tier 2 consists of adding the whole wombo combo headset tracking arm tracking positional tracking and more this is also pretty easy if you got the first tier set up download driver for vr then follow my steps now this application is used mostly in this setup for tracking and input emulation so that's the two things we will go over. First, let's go over tracking. So just go to head tracking and then just click connect skeleton. They also have a few other ones in here, but in this setup, we're specifically using connect because I'm pretty sure that is the cheapest thing here other than maybe webcam, but head tracking does not support webcam. So we're gonna use connect skeleton. Then the same thing with hand tracking, we're gonna also use connect skeleton. And this one actually has webcam. But body tracking, you don't want to change unless you're playing something like VR chat or another VR game that I am unaware of that benefits from having full body tracking. So yeah, don't bother with body tracking unless you're playing something like VR chat or you already have a full VR setup and you are trying to add body tracking to your VR chat character. So once you do that, you want to click on configuration and then go to tracking and this will just let you configure everything regarding your connect tracking and you can see general settings and it has the controller's responsiveness so for instance with the hand tracking you can control how responsive your controllers are whenever you are moving your arms i would personally say keep it at normal but you can just change this I'm, i don't honestly notice any difference between these three but just keep it at normal or responsive or if you see that very fast works for you set it to that so then you also have controller rotation emulation this is good for if you are playing with two console controllers and you're not playing with something like switch controllers that have rotation tracking and yeah so you want to set this to hand elbow angle or you can set this to whatever you like aiming is probably the worst unless you only play shooting vr games if you aren't only playing fps shooter vr games you want to set it to something like hand angle or hand elbow angle 
now last but not least we also have things like controller shift and offset this is just for changing the world space position of your controllers and your headset i won't be going over this and the reason why that is is because i don't have my controllers connected currently but as you can see you can just change the y'all you can change the y i wouldn't suggest that you change things here you should probably change stuff like this through the ovr advanced settings application which you can get through steam but that's something that you can go and research on your own and then we also have the override controllers orientation from assigned device or use only device buttons now in this case this is what i was talking about when i said that i was using switch controllers this is basically saying yes i want to overwrite the connects hand tracking with my switch hand tracking so that i can rotate my vr hands within the vr space as if i am in real life so that allows you to do things like for instance if you're playing a cooking game you can tilt things and pour things into cups and stuff like that now this isn't something mandatory but specifically for me i ran into many games where they wanted me to do stuff like that and so i needed switch controllers but this right here you should only set to yes if you are playing with switch controllers or some other controller that also supports rotational tracking so just set this to no normally then let's go ahead and talk about the tracker manager now i don't have anything connected currently but as you guys can see right here i have the device configuration for joy cons currently set up so you can go right here to the open toggle device support window and you can actually pick whatever you're using so for instance if you go down here you can set up vr gamepad controller and xbox controller only input this right here is what you will most likely be using unless you are going very advanced with this like how i am but if you're not going very advanced with this and you don't really care to do any tilting with the hands then you can just stick with this all this does is it only emulates inputs so it only takes the buttons that you click on your gamepad and translate those into vr controller input so you won't have to worry about your hands rotating or anything you won't have the ability to do that at all so in this case i have joy con control support i'm pretty sure we remote might also have rotational tracking and then you can also for some reason play with keyboard and mouse which is by far the worst thing you could possibly do so i would personally say if you want to get crazy with this you could possibly go with vr gamepad controller or if you happen to have one of these controllers you can go with daydream or gear vr but me specifically i would say stick with joy con control support or vr gamepad controller or xbox controller only input so me i have on use joy con from nintendo and it has a tutorial i don't need it but now let's say for instance you're using the switch controller you will just need to connect the switch controller via bluetooth through windows and then once you do that it should show up here just click update list of devices and then click the left one on this panel and then click the left one on this panel and then click assign so as you guys can see right here it says assign device even though i don't have my joy cons on and connected to my pc currently it still remembers that i have already connected to them so you just click the joy con and then click the corresponding one here and then click assign and then everything is set up from there now with controllers it is a tad bit more advanced and you will need to configure everything yourself I also forgot to add the calibration and connect device settings. Calibration is just one button. Just click the calibrate button, then get into the view of the connect and drive over your will set everything up from there. Now for connect device settings, that just allows you to change connect view angle and change tracking type.
Now here is the tips and tricks. Through my year of working on this, I had my ups and downs and definitely wanted to pull some hair out, but eventually I fixed most of my issues. One, if you're utilizing a Connect 360 or Connect 1 for tracking, having the Connect farther is a lot better than closer. The more space in your room, the better. The Connect needs to be able to detect your entire body and more. It has to see you reach and crouch and maybe even walk if your room is big enough. Two, if you have wireless controllers, use them, specifically switch controllers. They make things a lot easier than wielding two wire controllers. That was horrible. Switch controllers, even in my experience, also have support for rotation tracking, allowing for driver for VR to know how your hand is rotated, making VR feel like VR. Last but not least, play this with a wired headset, meaning that you should use USB tethering to send the headset data to your PC. This makes the experience way less laggy and with higher quality. Now, if your Wi-Fi is good enough, you could probably pass without wiring your phone. Now, to be honest, a lot of this is really preference based, but a few of these settings really matter. First, I'll start with performance. So you go to performance and the frame encoder, I would personally say, at least in my case, JPEG and H.264 are the best ones. H.264 tends to have better quality, but you might run into issues with fuzziness in the camera and even some visual glitches, but that also just depends on what you have your bitrate set on. So you'll need to find the sweet spot. For me, I would say for the bitrate, set it to about 30 and then turn off auto adjust bitrate because with the auto adjust bitrate on that causes a lot of issues because your bitrate is constantly fluctuating which will cause visual glitches regardless so turning off auto adjust bitrate and then setting it to, to whatever your sweet spot is that will almost completely get rid of all of your visual glitches but you won't have any visual glitches at all with jpeg but jpeg quality isn't nearly as good as h264 And then last but not least, we have the Steam VR settings. Honestly, keep that direct. Render resolution, don't change this. You should honestly change this within the actual Steam VR um, application. Use room setup, I didn't even know this existed. And then you also have the head height. I also did not know that this exists either. So honestly, just keep everything the way it is. And if you wanna experiment with this, the use room setup and the head height you can I honestly did not know that these existed so go ahead and try it now that's the end of this video i probably won't be making any more videos regarding this specific setup unless something big is introduced which makes this even better but no matter what if you need help i will always be lingering in the comments ready to answer questions thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one